we're here at this conference to introduce you to the .NET generation of technologies, to build the kind of experiences that we think businesses and individuals are going to expect. I look forward to the amazing things you will create with Visual Studio .NET. Effective today, we are open sourcing the entire Rosslyn project. We're actually announcing a new .NET foundation. We launched .NET Core 1.0 this morning. This is the future. .NET can literally be anywhere you need it to be. We have been the most loved framework three years in a row. Absolutely amazing. Hello, everybody. Happy first Thursday of February. Um, we are back for another edition of the .NET Maui Community Stand Up. And you can see we are we have this new brand for the .NET 20th birthday party coming up on Valentine's Day, February 14th. So there's going to be a stream and all this stuff and blah, blah, blah. We'll talk about it in a minute. But that's why everything looks cool and fresh because we have really cool designers. Also, I have my Maui hoodie on. Pretty cool. Almost got paint all over it in my apartment building this morning because there was wet paint and no fine, but I didn't. So we're in great shape. Uh, I am Maddie. I am one of your hosts here today, and I'm a PM on the Maui team here with my favorite, Dave. Hey, everybody. David Ort now. Uh, in St. Louis, Missouri, where, Maddie, if you could share my screen. Oh. I wanted to show because on all the meetings today, it's like, how's the snow? That's a so lot. If- I thought I just you were had, getting like a dusting. Nah, it's been coming down for a couple of days now, uh, and it's still going. You can't really tell from the front house camera, but and the back camera, I was going to show you because I had deer walking through just a second ago. Um, however, the uh, battery is dead because oh, it. I don't know if it's a cold issue or yeah. somebody flipped the switch. Anyway, so Pretty hopefully cool. y'all are staying warm wherever you are. Mike, what's the weather like where you are? Well, I was going to make a bad pun. That seems to be my thing. I was going to say your camera's frozen, but anyway. <laughs> Actually, weather's kind of dull where we are. So I'm obviously in Surrey, England. So it's Ooh. kind of the same weather all year. And Mike, who are you? Who are our wonderful, esteemed special <laughs> guest? How did you get here? <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. I just turned up. Yeah, so I'm a member of the Modern Client App Customer Advisory Team. I can hardly say that myself. I know we've taken some stick for the length of that title. So you'll have to get my boss, Alex, on next week to explain that. Um, So our role is to work with customers, help them build things, um, take the learnings of how they use our products back to the product team so we can drive product improvement. Your boss, Alex, is actually in the chat today as Lundy on Twitch. So, and he says you have a very fancy, fancy house, which I said when you joined, and then it glitched for a second, and I realized it's a background. So, yeah, definitely my house. Yeah, whatever, no big deal. So we have a bunch of people joining us. Oh my goodness, we already have the Netherlands, Germany, Jamaica, India. Wow, all the time zones are covered. Hopefully, all the weather conditions too. Um. Very exciting. And we're streaming to two YouTubes and Twitch and Facebook Live, I think, and Twitter. All the More Periscope. Um, oh, I like this You're comment. Going? Enable implicit usings from Microsoft Maui apparel. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. That wouldn't really be good branding, but because it wouldn't say anything. But I like it. That's or I joke. can make it say global. So I like it. Anyways, if this is your first time joining us. Oh, we have Ukraine. We have Guatemala. Um, if this is your first time joining us, the way this works is we talk about some blogs, some that we've put out as, at Microsoft and then many community ones. And this month was a busy blogging month. So I'm going to try and be quick, but you know how I get. I get very ranty because I get excited. And then Dave is going to talk about some of the PRs he's excited about that came up this month uh, from the community or from the team in the .NET Maui and adjacent repos. And then for the second half of this, we'll turn it over to our special guest, Mike, in his fancy house, uh, Celebrity Mike, to talk about the Onyx runtime. That is how you say it, right? You say it like Onyx, O-N-N-X? That's right. I've been saying that like that for years, and I don't think I've ever said it out loud because I just never talk about it. But So Mike actually took the time to take the native Onyx runtime libraries for iOS and Android and bind them in Xamarin and then use them in an app. And it was a whole thing, and he wrote a blog about it, and it's very cool. And then he talked about it on a podcast yesterday, and I was like, 
Mike's the best. Let's have him come tell everybody how I did it. So there will be some library stuff. There will be some machine learning stuff. I don't know. Also, my Roomba is emptying itself literally behind this door right now. So if it sounds like there's a vacuum, that's why he will be done in a second. His name is Toad. The Roomba mop's name is Toadette. So just FYI, without further ado, blogs. We have, uh, like I said, a bunch of blogs this month. So let me put these links in the chat. Yes, it is weird. Jason says in one of the YouTubes, it's weird to only see a portion of the comments. I know. I wish there was a way to like combine it all, but people just have different preferences on where they join for live streams. And like for me, I prefer Twitch, but I know I know a lot of people prefer YouTube. So we try to call out the ones that we see that we are talking about, hopefully. Um, cool. All right, let's get started. Like we said, .NET's turning 20. So dot, dot .NET literally dot dot and then a period and then net will take you to this page which has all the links to the anniversary broadcast and of course the visual studio 25th anniversary broadcast which is also really whack that's an old birthday that's a dot net can't drink in the u.s visual studio has been drinking for a few years because you have to be 21 here so that makes sense that's why 2022 is so good um but yeah so join us. It's going to be fun. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of people on the team have been getting together and telling stories and doing funny bits and showing old .NET stuff. So there should hopefully be a lot of uh, funny stuff to look at there. Um, Maui Preview 12 shipped. This is by someone you might know whose name is David. He's on this call. That's exciting. Shipped a couple weeks ago. More stuff. Z Index in particular, which I have a blog about, which I'm excited about. Um, there's this whole thing going on with iOS types in .NET 6. If you think this is going to affect you, you should look at this. We talk about it internally a lot. Um, it is a breaking change. Basically, we're changing n int and n u and in it, whatever to in pointer and u int pointer. <laughs> so it's a thing. You should look at it. Dave has been working with some community library maintainers um, as much as possible. Let us know if you have any concerns. Tweet us. The Twitters are on here at our names. So, well, you actually can't see mine because my name is too long, but <laughs> it's at Maddie Monaquilla. Um, Can I add yeah. a few comments to this? Oh, yeah. Add some comments. Go ahead. Um, so uh, this type change is all about unifying with .NET so that we're using the same types and operators that are in .NET. I mean, that's one of the main reasons, if not the main reason, that we're joining the rest of .NET and bringing uh, Xamarin into Maui as part of this transition. So um, all iOS uh, uh, libraries, dependencies will need to be recompiled. Uh, if they're making use of these types, they will need to be updated. We have an open PR, and we're currently working through uh, how to take it into .NET 6 servicing for, uh, I believe it's the end float type, because it didn't have all of the operators that we had over in the Xamarin implementation of it. So this is all about unification, so that moving forward, we really are using all of the same .NET, and we don't have these one-off um, not, you know, one or two off uh, uh, exceptions. Um, we know that this is, you know, some effort, but we will be providing guidance as to how you can adopt these changes, um, both for NuGet packages that uh, you're using, as well as any binding projects to native libraries, like what is your solution to those things? So um, if you want to talk about it further, because I know that it's a, a rather large change, um, feel free to reach out to me directly and uh, we can have a chat. Sweet. Thanks. That's a really fun one to start the day off with. Here's a breaking <laughs> change. It's okay. We it's tried cool. really hard. We tried really hard to work around it, not make it a break, do all kinds of yeah. uh, compiler IL stuff. Um, anything that you're imagining uh, that we should have looked at and you would suggest to us, I promise you. Yeah. I somebody, mean, we were on a call tried. like an hour and a half ago where they were like, do we really have to make people do this? Like people are still trying to figure it out, but it, it's, it's been a tough situation. Um, Visually. Uh, I almost started this with speaking of tough situations, which I feel like is not the right positive note to start this on because VS Mac 2022 uh, is in preview. It's preview five that just shipped. It is really, really great. Uh, unless you want to start writing Maui apps because we have very little support for Maui in it. And I wanted to bring this up. 
because I've been getting a bunch of tweets and questions and comments. Um, the reason that Maui support is coming secondary to VS Mac, and you know, there's a lot of Maui support in VS Windows, is just because we literally had to rebuild all of the Xamarin work we did in VS Mac on the .NET 6 runtime with a new UI stack. And now, like in the present, we are starting to work on Maui support stuff because we couldn't break Xamarin developers with the new VS Mac update, right? So we had to press it. And if I had infinite engineers, I would have made it this happen months ago. Uh, but I know people are getting very, very antsy. And I just wanted to call it out. We didn't mention it in this blog, which was a huge oversight by me and Jordan on the VS Mac team. So we're going to actually amend this and put a little note in it that just says, Yes, Maui support's coming, uh, but you are all of our our favorite people on the stream. So I wanted to let you know out of my out of my mouth and my brain that I know this is frustrating. We are working on it. There is a VS Mac Insiders program. So if you are a really heavy user of VS Mac and you kind of want, it's not quite MVP, but it's somewhere that bridges the gap between public and MVP. You can reach out to me on Twitter. Reach out to Jordan Matheson if you haven't before. And we can see if we can get you added to that. Um, but yeah, we're working on VS Mac. It's just not ready yet. But we're working on it. I talk about this for hours every day. So I promise <laughs> it's happening. And I know it looks like nothing's happening. I just want you to know that. Anyways. It works on my machine, Maddie. I, I don't know you know what? Me. The command line stuff is honestly pretty good. And no, I mean, I'm saying VS. VS Mac works on my machine. Oh, that's pretty. I mean, sometimes it works for me. We just need, we just need to ship that thing to everybody else. Yep, we're getting there. Hi. We're doing our best. Um, Dave, would you like to talk about some of these third-party libraries situations? Uh, yeah, so uh, there are a number of third-party libraries, uh, namely for Google, Facebook uh, libraries, uh, especially fundamental for Android development, um, but also for some iOS cross-platform development that we have maintained over time. Uh, these are not authored by us, but we bind uh, .NET to these native libraries so that you can use them in your mobile applications. Um, and one of them uh, that had been getting a bit dusty was the Facebook SDK. And so uh, Israel Soto recently rejoined our uh, SDK team and has been working on updating our bindings, the first of which uh, we're shipping is the Facebook SDK. Um, so that is out now, and that's what this blog post announces. And then it also gives an indication of what the other top SDKs are that we maintain. If you've been using Xamarin for a long time, you know that there were a lot of components. We used to have a whole component store. And uh, while you know others would submit their components as well, we maintained a lot of components. Um, and so that's not really the focus for us anymore. Um, you know, so we're really uh, narrowing down what it is that is most critical for us to support. Um, and uh, if you're using these libraries, and I'll just make the call again, and uh, you have dependencies on these uh, during your transition into .NET 6, uh, definitely reach out to me. I'd love to know uh, more about that. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Thank you. All right. On to, on to the really fun stuff. Not that that all wasn't totally fun, but onto the really fun stuff. Those are more like business updates, right? It's yeah, like, right? This is the housekeeping we have to get out of the way. Because we haven't been able to talk to you in a month. It's so sad. Um, oh my gosh, I was like, I don't follow Dave. And then I realized I have this in an incognito window, so you don't have to look at my <laughs> yoga pants ads, as I always get. Um, Samir started a tweet about best of 2021. Uh, about articles and videos. So first of all, I totally stole some of this for today, which is exciting. Second of all, there's a lot of good videos and stuff in the comments. But if you have something you want to... <laughs> oh, this is the rest of the Twitter feed. That's really funny. If you want to add stuff to this, go ahead. The tweet's in the URL list, which I sent, and we'll send again. So it's down here, Twitter. So that will be great. He'll pretty much do my job for me if he does a summary blog. So um cool this is a maui hello world tutorial on windows by Bo bogus blah i don't know i'm sorry i'm doing my best so very easy to install maui if you haven't heard yet in, on windows you have the preview version of visual studio 2022 and the reason it's in preview preview vs is because it's maui's in preview still you check off the dotnet maui checkbox you uh, file new Maui app, or 
Maui Blazer app. What? And then this blog talks you through what you see. We've done this before in, in some talks, some intro talks and stuff, but it's nice to see it in a blog sometimes um, and see, you know, this person's perspective of it. And he talks you through all the different ways to get things running on the Android emulator, the iOS simulator, and Windows. So, and of course, Hot Reload, everyone's favorite. So if you haven't gotten your hands on Maui yet and you want kind of a friendly walkthrough, this is a great place to start. Um, Michael Ridland has been doing a blog series called Dotnet Maui Source of Truth, <laughs> which makes it sound like we're like lying about things, but we're not. We're just, you know, <laughs> we're just being us. But he's been going into the Maui source code and like dissecting things. So in this blog, Michael talks about overlays, um, all the different places we implement it. And then he actually uses it. Where's the video? What the heck? Oh my goodness. There was a video in here and I had it open in the new tab and I was like, it's in the blog. I don't need it open in the new tab and now I can't find it. So that's pretty funny. But there are overlays. It's pretty cool. There's, you know, the native implementations of it. So if you're interested in learning about how windowing works um, in the source code, this is Michael explaining it to you. And I really don't know what happened in this video and I feel very weird about it. Okay. Andreas had a busy month. I had to choose between three or four blogs of his because I wasn't going to show just like four Andreas blogs. This is the one I chose because it's Z Index, which is shiny and new. And I love Z Index. It is literally just stacking things on top of each other, like into or out of the phone. I don't know if you ever remember, like PowerPoint had this like exploded view where you could see like the layer of everything, like sent to, sent to front, bring, sent to back or whatever. Um, but that's basically what Z index is. And the best part is this is the example. It is a picture of a Sheba in front of a forest behind text. That is the power of Z index. So ship it. Um, anyways, Z index is really cool. Look, now the text is behind the Sheba. <laughs> wow. Such Z. Thank I, you. I did find the design work to be a highlight of the blog post. For oh, sure. yes. No, it was really wonderful. Um, so check this one out. Z index is really cool. Lots, lots of UI customization. I can't wait to see if you don't follow Kim Phil Potts <laughs> on Twitch. He's, a uh, one of our, our nearest and dearest. And he does a lot of UI work, really cool. Like UI recreations of stuff he finds on dribble. Uh, I can't wait to see what Kim does with Z index because it's going to be really cool. Speaking of things on dribble that people recreated, that was a great segue. Totally. I feel too. Leo Marie recreated this pretty boarding pass, which um, I I just, if, if you've been here before, you know I just will show off vlogs because they have pretty UI because I like pretty UI. And it's cool that people do this with Xamarin Forms and or Maui. Um, Leo Marie in particular does a really good job just like dividing designs for people like me who are not really design focused and being like, okay, like this is the box that you have to build. And then this box gets stuck onto this box. Um, and it's a pretty short little blog post. So um, check this one out. I I actually used boarding pass, a uh, boarding pass sample app from I think like Telerik. I can't remember. One of our control vendors when I was testing out Hot Reload for the first time. And I was like, okay, let's see if I can change the color of this boarding pass. And I did it and I hit save and it worked. And I was like, whoa, mind blown. Um so yeah, this one boarding pass UI weirdly has a special place in my heart, <laughs> which I know is random. Um, for th about a year ago, maybe time is irrelevant. We started going through Rendy's Uber clone app. So Rendy Zamboy and also Rendy's wife Charlene Zam girl are expecting a Zam baby. So congratulations, <laughs> you two. That's very exciting. Um, but Rendy has a great blog series where he does a bunch of stuff but this this one in particular i liked it was just kind of step-by-step -step cloning uber um but rendy started talking about state machine and kind of stateless app development with xamarin forms and so he took his uber clone app and made it stateless using state machine um all these different states here so anyways cool state really confuses me i don't know why i've done so much programming in all these different languages where they handle state all these different ways and i still can't figure it out it's fine. It's a good blog, though. Um, first prototype, pretty onboarding pages. Gotta love it. Some swiping. 
Also got to love it. Look at this. Look at this. That looks so good. Anyways, just thought people, people are focusing more and more on design these days than we have in the past. Um, and this stuff always gives me good ideas. Look at that. That could be some Z index. That shoe is in front. I think this is from Steven Davison's tutorial for it. I can't remember. Yeah, there's a couple of variations of that carousel design. One yeah. uh, Javier has uses fruit. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Uh, Steven's 2018 creating a simple but good looking app tutorial. Still always relevant because everything he does looks great. So cool. Oh, Luis was another one who had like three blogs I had to pick from this month. So this one I liked. It was organizing your .NET MAUI startup file. So it used to be called MAUI Program CS. Now it's startups.cs. Um, I am someone who, when my CS proj is not organized the way I like it, I get very frustrated, even though I rarely ever look at it or edit it. It's just solely me being annoying. Um, and so the startup CS file is kind of like the new app.xaml.cs, but it also combines the underlying app startup.cs and the other one app delegate those ones on the platforms and all that stuff into one kind of startup where you can initialize all your libraries and stuff. So this is another one that gets out of hand really quickly. Now that wasn't really a problem in Xamarin because you would have to do it in all the separate platform projects, but this is just a cool talk through about what happens in the startup file and then how you can kind of organize it with your extension methods and all that stuff. So it, does, it looks actually readable. And then I'll be quick. Deep dive into architecture, the handler's architecture. So we're moving from renderers to handlers. Javier Suarez Ruiz on our team talks about this all the time. Um, but this blog, Daumer, also uh, talks about handlers and kind of his his voice and his perspective. So that's helpful. Um, the architecture is similar, but different. It will be compatible, but it will not um, be the same as it is now. So yeah, makes, makes Maui more extensible, which is cool. Finally, Bodon did a blog on uh, Xamarin forms to JavaScript two-way communication, which I thought was kind of timely because we we're talking a little bit about library bindings with Mike. Um, but this is uh, how to bind JavaScript in iOS and Android and using a web view for it, which I think is cool. I mean, we're doing this with .NET Maui Blazor too, sort of, using Blazor code. So that's exciting, which is obviously .NET, but html too so check this out i'm gonna stop rambling and dave is gonna show us the latest prs <laughs> boom thank you uh ankit in the youtube chat since he's mentioned it twice he definitely wants us to see it uh is that uh controls like chip should be part of the standard library to make an app uh you know there are two philosophies everything should be in the box and only the fundamentals should be in the box. And we're definitely in between on that stuff. Um, but there is, I believe, a chip control in the community toolkit. So uh, that's where we put a lot of those um, very useful, but um, you know, not, not directly in the box kinds of things. We encourage them there. So check that out. Um, cool. Are we sharing my screen? We are. We are already sharing my screen. And uh, nope, no need for another weather check. It's still snowing. Looks exactly the same. All right. I uh, wanted to first call out some, some news. Again, going back to some business updates. Um, but there are a lot of community contributions here. So Gerald and Javier have shepherded out yet again another 5.0 Xamarin Forms service release. Um, so really, we're, we're, we're just past a year now. 5.0 has been out, and this is the ninth service release. Lots of wonderful fixes in here from many contributors. Michael, man, I need those hovers to give me the real names of people because then I can't mess them up completely. Chucker, that's a good handle. It's always good to find good handles. I've got a good handle coming up in one of the uh, community things. So uh, if you haven't seen it, if you need it, there it is. Um, if you have high priority bugs that you need addressed, uh, and you have a PR for it, please submit it. Uh, and if you need help with it, get up on here and open a discussion, tag Gerald and Javier, and they'll talk to you about it. Cool. 
Uh, let's see, what else do we have? So uh, on the .NET MAUI, and it's actually pinned at the top of the issues here, um, John Dick, the lead for lead engineer of the team, has asked for your feedback on repo participation community. Um, how are we doing? Uh, we know that, uh, especially during this time of uh, rebuilding and uh, porting code and kind of getting the foundation laid, that uh, we haven't been as able to foster contributions and, and pull requests um, as we have been with Xamarin Forms. Some of that is, you know, we haven't been able to have the time to provide the guidance so that it's easier for contributors to onboard. But nonetheless, uh, we, we don't want to lose touch with how things are going for you. Those of you who want to contribute and have tried, um, let us know how it's going and what we can do to uh, be better open source uh, maintainers for you. All right. And then uh, every Friday uh, so far for the past, I don't know, three, four weeks, uh, we have been shipping new documentation. Dave Britch uh, authors the majority of this and has been, he's also in the UK. So you obviously know each other, Mike. Uh, yep. <laughs> well, you know each other because you've worked with each other for like a decade now. Um, so uh, yeah, new documentation is here. So if you are not finding what it is that you're looking for in terms of documentation, chances are that it is over on the uh, Xamarin Forms side of things and you can go kind of do the mental gymnastics to be like, okay, well, just replace the Xamarin Forms part with Microsoft.Maui and pretty much everything is the same. Um, but it will all end up over here eventually. It's uh, We're in the process of porting. And so that's where a lot of this is coming from. So we've got some of the good XAML uh, fundamentals in here. What is data binding all about? Um, I, I, in particular, enjoy the markup extensions stuff, how to make a markup extension, how to use one uh, that really kind of condenses your XAML. Um, and then uh, plenty of other things in here, the brushes, the graphics, images, shadows. Shadows is a wonderful new feature of Maui that you didn't quite have uh, in Xamarin Forms. So, and you always got to put the shadow on the bot. Makes them look really good. Is this the? Is there a new bot for the twenty year? Or is this the same bot? Should we have a new bot? It's the same bot, but you can have the uh, custom bot, the modded .NET we bot. We should do. We should mod that. a bot, and and yeah, we should do that. Yeah. Jazz, jazz up the bot. Yeah, I'll put the mm. mod link in the chat because it's fun. I tweeted mine out the other day. She has furry boots. Furry boots. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, wanted to point you back to the status page in the wiki for .NET MAUI. If you're wondering how close are we getting? We almost there? What's going on? Uh, yes, we are. We're getting really close. And this is actually three days old. Um, I was just this morning doing a comparison of um, Preview 13, which is the upcoming release with Preview 12. And there is a lot of work in there. Um, so where preview 11 to preview 12 was a bit lighter with the holidays and, you know, folks being on vacation and whatnot, uh, preview 13 is jam packed with lots of really cool stuff. Um, most importantly, just filling out all of these gaps. So, um, for example, somebody was asking me about, uh, label formatted text and although it's marked as not even started here, that's, that's needs to be updated. So that'll be updated, uh, in the, in, in the near future because it's there. It's working now on preview 13 or on the main branch if you are writing the rails on the bleeding edge. So that'll be in the next release. Then you can start doing things like uh, spans and span gestures and all that sort of thing or trying them and seeing if they work and then telling us if they don't. Um, so lots of great stuff in here. Um, very Getting very close. You can see there's a lot of green these days, right? Lots of green. Um, collection view, a lot of stuff in progress that'll all go green, hopefully very soon. Carousel view is closely related. So if you're interested, check that out. Um, uh, and this is cool. So, uh, just, well, now 20 hours ago when I looked earlier, it was 18. That's how time works. Uh, this is, uh, Jonathan Peppers who works on our Android SDK team. And one of the key things that we've been drilling in on is how to improve Android startup performance. Um, so this uh, primarily is benefiting your production app when you release it, right? So that your end user gets that snappy startup experience. And uh, you can see here how our app times are comparing across uh, legacy Xamarin Android, but then also the different preview releases. 
uh, you can see that the times are getting better, better, better. Then they kind of pop back up. And so then we need to go drill in and figure out what, what exactly happened there. But the really, uh, the really exciting news um, is that, as you can see, the Xamarin, uh, <laughs> why did I just say Xamarin? The Maui, that's what we're here to talk about. The Maui startup time has been consistently going down. And now in preview 13, your .NET new Maui with profiled AOT starts up in 576 milliseconds on a Pixel 5, which is not the latest generation of Pixel, but it's obviously fairly new. Um, so there you go. That's cool. And then uh, the pool math app. So this is Jonathan Dick's app. It's not open source, but we he has shared the source internally with us. Um, you can go check out pool math uh, if you have a pool. Uh, and even if you don't have a pool, I don't have a pool and I checked it out. Um, but it's all about maintaining your pool and pH balances and chemicals and all that sort of thing. So it's a fairly representative, you know, small to mid size application. And uh, we are now down to with profiled AOT uh, 1245 milliseconds. So that's a little over a second. It's not where we want to be. We want to be closer to the 800 milliseconds or below. And, uh, and that's our goal. The um, the cool bit here that you don't see on this slide or on this page is that when we started, it was up around uh, like 2,500 milliseconds. So we have already cut this in half, um, and that's work across um, the runtime teams, the uh, SDK teams, the Maui team. Um, so more work to be done there, but hopefully that's good progress that we can all celebrate. All right, so a couple of community things that I uh, have seen and I thought would be cool to pull out. And this is a uh, pretty good Nick, Galadrill. What is Galadrill from? Is this a, is this a Tolkien thing? Is this, what is this from? Yeah, Galadriel from Lord of the Rings. Galadriel? Oh, is that what I'm thinking? Pretty cool. Of? I did see that and I go. thought that, but I thought maybe I was the only one. <laughs> No, no, definitely. So one of the things that Xamarin Forms Shell lacks uh, is the simple ability to add badges to your tabs and to your menu items. And so what this is, is an attached property that enables you to do that. So if I go in here and look at the sample, dun, 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 and then look at the page, app shell, and you can see that uh, you have this attached property where you can set the color for your badge, and then you can set the whatever text you want there to be in there. So that's a nice, simple way uh, to be able to add that to your uh, shell applications. We did have a PR for that, but I don't think it made it in. Clearly didn't make it, make it in because that's why there's a library for it um, in Xamarin Forms. So that's something we can look at in the future to add to .NET MAUI. Uh, and then uh, this is something I ran across in my GitHub search, and then I remembered that VJ had uh, tweeted about this. <laughs> so we have the C Sharp markup extensions. Uh, they're, they're UI extensions that give you a more fluent uh, syntax for Xamarin Forms and for .NET MAUI and for Uno. Um, and I don't know if he did Avalonia. But essentially, so you can kind of stay in C Sharp uh, don't use any XAML, and you can get a, a nicer uh, interface to be able to build your UI. Um, and what uh, he's done here has done exactly the same thing for your Blazor web view. So if you're doing .NET MAUI with Blazor for your UI, you can use a similar declarative uh, C Sharp syntax. Cool. And finally, this is the code uh, for that extension. It's the .NET MAUI toolkit, uh, .NET MAUI Blazor toolkit. I wonder if he's going to add more things here, if it's just going to be the extensions. Toolkit kind of says, I'm going to put more things in here. Um, so check that out. And I think that's what I have right now for community updates. Uh, definitely be on the lookout in coming weeks for the next uh, preview, preview 13 of .NET MAUI. Like I said, it's got a ton of stuff in it. And with that, we have 20 minutes to talk about Onyx. Onyx, not the Pokemon. Let's, let's get Onyx. Let's get on it. <laughs> Onyx. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, where to start then? I suppose it's probably worth saying what Onyx is if folks don't know what that is. So it's an open source project and um, Onyx stands for Open Neural Network Exchange, in case you were wondering. So in a nutshell, 
Uh, it lets you run inferences using a portable model across platforms using a single API set. So we actually use this in several of our own products. So that would include Visual Studio, Office, uh, and Bing. And now it's available for Xamarin. We can use it in our own mobile apps as well. Cool. Do you want me to share your screen yet, or do you want to wait? Well, yes. So um, I did put a video together to give you a flavor oh. of the sort of things that you oh. can do. So fancy. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm going to play this video. I'll try and talk over it. You might see some familiar faces. Oh, uh, so yeah. This model is called Ultraface. So this is facial oh. recognition. It takes the primary face from an image, and it marks up the uh, the region where the face exists in that picture. So, hey, I know that you guy. You couldn't find a better male model. What's going on? <laughs> we have an image classifier model, um, and this will take the primary object in a photo, and it will give a, a score for each of the labels that the model supports. So you Sweet. can tell the first one's pretty good, and the rest maybe not so much. And then you've got uh, object detection models. So these will, similar to Ultraface, mark up parts of the image that it can detect objects it recognizes. And in this case, it'll also provide a classification. So you can imagine the sort of things we do with this today. You know, we could, you know, automatically tag photos. Maybe we could find similar photos based on objects that are relevant. Um, so yeah, that's just a flavor of the sort of things you can do do with Onyx. And I should probably mention Is that. that um, Yep. Is the source code anywhere? Uh, yes, this is all um, available on the Onyx GitHub repo. That's pretty cool. I'll see so if that, I can dig up um, a link for it. That sample focuses heavily on vision, but obviously there's several other categories that you can do with, with the Onyx runtime. Wow. Wow. Sweet. So, um, so uh, yeah, um, I was going to also give you a sense of how you use this in practice. So obviously I did the blog post last year, uh, but in a in a brief summary, you essentially load your model, uh, you prepare some input. So it has to be in the form uh, that the model was trained to understand. You run the inference, that then gives you some in output. You have to you know, make that into a format that again makes sense to you, and then you can do something useful with it. So perhaps it's worth, um, maybe I'll show you the sample that accompanies the blog post. In fact, before I do that, it's probably worth mentioning the model it's using. It's called MobileNet. So that's an image classification model. So it takes the principal object in, a, in an image and it will give scores against all the, the labels it supports. Something to bear in mind if you're trying to do this yourself, it's very important to follow the model documentation. Rubbish in, rubbish out. Um, so in this case, it's asking you to prepare input in mini batches of three channel RGB values where the image is 224 by 224. You also need to normalize the RGB values uh, so that they are within a range of zero to one. And you've got some mean and standard deviation values to apply to the RGB images themselves. So what this gives you on the as a as an output um, is essentially like a score for each of the thousand classes that this particular model supports. Um, it, I thought I was going to point out a really useful app, actually. Um, it's called Netron. So it allows you to load your model and it will visualize everything that's going on. And most importantly, it will tell you the names of the inputs and the outputs and also the size and shape of the uh, inputs and outputs that you're going to be working with. So the solution, it's just a file new Xamarin Forms app. Um, we've added the Onyx runtime NuGet package to the common project, as well as to each of the platform targets. But apart from that, it's pretty much what the template gave us. So in terms of some of the artifacts that we've got in the common project, we've got uh, the model itself. We've got a text file that represents the uh, labels supported by this particular model. I've included a sample image, which happens to be a dog. Apart from that, there's not a whole lot going on in this app from a UI point of view. It's just a single button, and you click it, and then we run some inferencing. 
So in this case, we load a sample app, which I've kindly provided for you. And we pass the byte array into this classifier and then display the top result or the top label in an alert. So we'll take a look at the classifier. There's a couple of constants up here that just represents the size and the shape of the uh, input that we spoke about moments ago, as well as the named inputs and outputs. First thing it's gonna do is just load a few of those embedded resources so we can use them. So the labels, the model, the sample image, and we create something called uh, an inference session. So that's uh, the runtime representation of the model. And that's how we, we use the model in our Xamarin app. I'm not gonna go into detail because this is following the steps that we painstakingly reviewed in the documentation, but- um, Mike, can you zoom in a little bit, please? I'm getting some comments in the chat. I forgot to ask. Nice. Yeah. Better. Thank you. You're the best. No, Sorry, no I hope way. I didn't interrupt your flow. Yeah, what was I saying? Oh, that's it. So um, so we basically take this byte array and we're using skier sharp because we need to transform the image so it's the right size and shape. So we're just doing a rotate and a center crop. So once we've got an image that's the right size, uh, we're essentially following the instructions. So it looks horrible, I'll be honest, but it's actually simple. Um, it's just iterating over all the RGB values. It's uh, making sure that they're you know normalized so that they're between zero and one. We're applying you know some uh, RGB specific mean and standard distribution numbers to it basically. And then we get this thing called a dense tensor. So that is, for all intents and purposes, a multidimensional array. That's the sort of inputs and outputs that uh, the Onyx runtime deals with here. And so what we're doing is we're saying we've got a single input, and it happens to be called input. And we are uh, initializing the dense tensor with that flat array. And then we can get our single named output back from the result. And that's uh, in this case, all we're doing is we've got a, a flat array of float values, which represents the scores. And so all we have to do in this case is say, give me the highest score and uh, give me the label that corresponds to that particular index. Uh, so we'll go ahead and run that. And all being well, when I hit run, it's gonna do all that and then just give us an alert to tell us what kind of animal is in that picture. So that happens to be a golden retriever. So, um, so yeah, that's it in a nutshell, uh, how we go ahead and use Onyx Runtime in your Xamarin Forms apps. Well, that's cool. And this, so this is all happening on device, right? There's no cloud involved. Yeah, that's right. That's a really good point. Um, so the reason you would want to do this on device uh, might be because you want functionality to work when you don't have connectivity. Um, you may have some low latency scenarios where you don't necessarily, you can't afford the hop to the back end every time you want to process something. Mm -hmm. um, other reasons may be to avoid the backend infrastructure cost, or maybe you've just got some requirements, which means that the uh, the data can't leave the device itself. Yeah, so I, I had used uh, um, was Microsoft Vision, Azure Vision, the Vision APIs. Um, and I had done this previously with the conference Vision app that I made for build, gosh, was like three years ago now. Uh, back when we were in person, <clears throat> in uh, oh, that, those days, um, yeah. But I, you know, I had to use uh, the cloud. I had to, I was able to do some work on device, but not not the end to end stuff. Um, and I was also using the API to continually train the uh, the model. Um, but yeah, it was much slower. Like what you just showed I was instant. So our team actually did a similar thing a few years ago. I don't know if you read our write-up. I think that was an internal thing. Um, but yeah, that app did something similar whereby you could take a picture of someone and it would tell you if the person was a member of your team. And then you could take several pictures and then like onboard that member, you know, send the pictures to the cloud. It would retrain the model and then it would come back and tell you, yeah, you're, you're a fully fledged member of the team. So we actually um, used Onyx Runtime and rewrote that, um, I think November last year. So I think what we wanted to do was replace our platform specific and model specific code with a single code base that used our you know, portable Onyx model. And the second thing we were looking to do was like, can we simplify the experience here? So rather than having to have someone take specific photos, 
we thought, wouldn't it be great if we could just, you know, if they could hold the camera up and we could process the, uh, the, the frames that came back from the live camera preview and give them the same experience. So just hold the phone up and it'll tell you immediately whether or not the person's a member of the team. And the same goes for the onboarding experience. So instead of having to say, right, turn left, turn right, and, and so on, you could just say, right, can you just turn your head left and right and then let the machine learning process the frames and tell you when we've got the um, sufficient photos of different angles and at the right quality. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was um, that was quite an interesting experience. Wow. There's a so, question in the chat. How hard is it to prepare a model for something like this? Do you mean to create a model or to prepare input for the model? I'll I assume that actually. So, so yeah, we used a couple of models uh, for that hackathon actually. So the first was the ultra face one we showed earlier. So that was just to get the part of the, the photo that contained the face. But then we actually created our own models using uh, the Azure custom vision service. So the first model was the simple like, you know, is this person a member of our team based on the examples? Uh, the second told you, uh, you know, what profile is this photo? Is it front facing? Is it a side shot and so on? So they were quite easy because that service is so easy to use. You just upload your images, which provides the training you know the samples it needs and you tell it you tag those images to tell them uh, to tell the the training algorithm what that means you train it up and it'll actually create you an onyx model on the back of that you can just download and then use it straight away in your app and actually the um, there's some really good documentation for how to use custom vision models so that does make things uh, a lot easier it's also got a lot less uh, pre-processing compared to some of the other models as well Sweet. So how did Onyx get this to work with Xamarin? Like, how did you get a NuGet package that just you can just pull in and it works with that few steps? Were you involved with that at all? Yeah, so we kind of got involved with the Onyx team because we happened to be working with a customer who thought it was a great fit, apart from the inconvenience that it didn't support Xamarin. So we actually got this working pretty quickly in a POC. Most of the puzzle pieces were already there, actually. So under the hood, this is actually just using the native iOS and Android frameworks. So the real work was to, um, you know, make sure they're included uh, as part of the NuGet package. And of course, you know, making sure those frameworks were linked into the apps at build time. Uh, they already had a lot of the native interop code done. So we just had to adapt that a little bit to take account of some platform specific things. Um, one of those being to support those platforms that use AOT, such as iOS. Um, but yeah, I'd say probably the major piece of work to make that uh, available was uh, <laughs> the team had to make sure they didn't break all of the good stuff they'd already got. Um, you know, so we had to add the Xamarin bits without necessarily, you know, changing how things worked, you know, from a build process, I mean, right now. So can you, um, you mentioned doing a POC for a customer and, and we probably can't tell who the customer is or anything like that, but um, can you can you describe some real world scenarios where uh, this is being used and or would be used? I mean, yeah, no, pictures I, of Maddie and I are obviously yeah. are high on people's lists. To, I don't know. Uh, I, I do. think people are probably scoping to add that to their own apps as we speak. Um, I honestly, I think it's used. I think everywhere. Um, you know, so for example, earlier. I was, uh, and I can't say specifically if this is Onyx, but to give you the example of usage, um, I was making some slides and PowerPoint said, do you want us to just lay out your slide for you? Take that how you will. Uh, great, that kind of makes that workflow a lot more efficient. And then, you know, I was writing an email that had some images and it could auto populate the captions, which makes that more accessible. But um, I guess based on the enterprise customers that we've been working with, I think there's just a if I generalize a little bit, um, there's probably a push to try and remove some of those error prone, repetitive manual steps so that people can focus on higher value things. No, that, that definitely makes sense. And I think it's it's helpful to be able to connect from 
you know, simple um, POC kind of things like you're showing to some real world scenarios where this stuff does apply. I, I hadn't been thinking about, you know, those workflow things or even the accessibility thing, maybe because I'm tired and I need a second cup of coffee. But um, uh, I, I think it's very helpful to uh, illustrate those things to uh, so that, you know, folks who are watching and .NET developers, when you're talking to your cut, your company and uh, your customers be like, Hey, we got this thing we can do. You want to do it? Yeah. That's it. Me so do it. ML just kind of gives you some useful insights and then you, you do something with that, like solve a problem or mm -hmm. enhance an experience. Nice. I am out of questions, Maddie. I mean, I just want to say uh, your your manager, Mike, is in the chat, and he oh, did no. say that you did lots of magic things to make it work, and you made it sound like it was not that difficult, but I know for a fact you worked on this for a very long time, <laughs> and it was not the easiest thing in the world. So, so I'll probably say maybe some parting thoughts is um, I've probably made it look like that you can just sort of pick this up and suddenly you've built some features. Um, truth be told, um, it can be quite an iterative process getting some of the models to work. Um, I'd say if you're trying to do this for the first time, it's worth looking at the Xamarin ex specific examples. They'll probably feel a little bit more comfortable, maybe provide a gentler on-ramp. But then if you're going to start looking at incorporating existing you know, pre-built models, it's, it's always worth checking to see if the instructions are good, if there's good samples. Um, I think a lot of the samples are, in fact, in Python, so it's uh, it, it's certainly worth being selective about the model you choose to go ahead with, because if you don't have a traditional data science background, it can actually be quite uh, overwhelming to to interpret. And you know, how do you translate that into C sharp code? Whoa! Wow. That was awesome. And you finished right on time, which is amazing because we didn't even give you enough time. But um, some other things I saw in the chat, get this sweatshirt from the link I posted. It's from the bonfire store. It goes to charity. You can get it in all different colors. You don't have to get the it. The shirt doesn't go to charity. The shirt goes to you. But all right, the yeah, the shirt charity. or sweatshirt goes to me. Well, to whoever orders <laughs> it. The proceeds from it go to charity. There you go. Very exciting. Uh, we'll see you in a month. Mike has an amazing blog on this, which we did put in the URL list. Um, I'm going to post the link to the blog as well. You can get to most of the stuff, the examples and everything from there. Mike was also on the wonderful .NET Maui podcast, which I'm pulling up the link to right now. I think it was, did you, did it, did you record it last night? Yeah, at about 10 p.m. or something. Okay, so it'll be up today, but I'll send you the link to the Dinette Maui podcast in general. Um, the most recent one was not one, but two Maui previews, which I think mm -hmm. is pretty good. So. Mike is also available for hire uh, to read your children or you to sleep at night. Yes. <laughs> so he's very he has a very calming effect. It really does. I read them my blog posts. Oh, sure, sure. So good. <laughs> I love that. Also, if your company needs support with Xamarin Forms and or .NET MAUI, Mike's team, the modern the client experience, I don't know, we call them I the know, cat customer advisory team. We Alex on next cat. week. Yeah, let us know because uh, depending on the company and the situation and stuff, that's that's what they're there for and they do all this really cool stuff. But they also act, like sometimes just build us features too, like Another person on Mike's team who I'm sure many of you know, Sweeky, building the upgrade assistant stuff right now, but also helps customers. We pull you all in way too many directions. You're all the best. Uh, and we would all die without you. But Blounty, uh, Mike's manager, put his email in the chat, ALBlount, B-L-O-U-N-T, at Microsoft.com. Um, and reach out to him if you need maybe some support. So, Mike, you got any cool engagements you, that you're able to share with us or no? I know that you guys are working on a lot of upgrading to Maui stuff right now. Yeah, so um, nothing to share at this stage. It's all super okay. secretive. Cool. That's why I like this team. They don't tell me anything because they know I'm going to tell everybody. I can't <laughs> keep a secret, so. 
Um, yeah, these sweatshirts, really okay, good good question in the chat. Sorry, the sweatshirt does run a little bit small. See, my arms are thing. So I got a small, I would have ordered a medium, but it's comfortable. It's thick. It's keeping me warm. So, all right. Well, Mike, thanks for joining. And thank you, all of our amazing couple hundreds of viewers for joining us this month. Uh, let me know what blogs you want highlighted next time. We'll see you the first week of March, 2022. Hopefully it will not be snowing in St. Louis. Or maybe it will. It happens. Maybe it, happens. it will. So February and March. Uh, appreciate all of you joining us. And hopefully, oh, we'll also hopefully see you for the .NET 20th anniversary birthday party in a couple weeks. Yes, absolutely. All right. See you later. Bye. See ya.